Hey everybody, welcome to episode four of Performance Max for Developers. I'm Devin, a developer relations engineer supporting the Google Ads API. And in this episode, we're going to talk about Performance Max retail campaigns. Before I go any further, just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying the video, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all of our latest video content. With that out of the way, let's dive in. Performance Max retail campaigns are a special subset of Performance Max campaigns. So they have all of the benefits of Performance Max campaigns that we've already discussed, but they also leverage account inventory held in linked Merchant Center accounts. So now is probably a good time to say one of the requirements of having a Performance Max retail campaign is that you have a Google Merchant Center account and that Merchant Center account has to be linked to your Google Ads account. I'll leave some instructions about this in the video description below. Performance Max Retail, being the new state-of-the-art technology, offers several enhancements over smart shopping campaigns. For example, they offer language targeting based on Merchant Center account feeds or campaign criteria, final URL expansion, which we covered in the last episode, store targeting, the ability to set conversion goals on a per customer or per campaign basis, as well as several additional forms of inventory. We saw this simple diagram in the last episode, which kind of entails what goes into a valid serving PMAX campaign. So how do we make this a PMAX retail campaign? All we have to do is set some shopping settings on our campaign using data from our linked Merchant Center account. There is one other criteria though, in order to make this a PMAX retail campaign, you must have a valid product partition tree associated with each asset group in your campaign. Not to worry, we're going to cover this in great detail in episode six. However, for the purposes of today, we're just going to be focusing on that first step, adding some shopping settings to our campaign. With that, let's hop into the interactive guide so I can show you how this is done. All right, we're now in the interactive guide in the PMAX retail section. And as you can see here, the code on the right, this actually reflects the campaign settings that we set in the last episode. There's nothing special going on right now. But if you look on the left-hand side here, I have this drop-down. Is this a retail campaign? Now, if I select yes or true, you can see this adds shopping settings to my campaign settings with this set shopping settings call. And as you can see here, there are two required fields, and those fields are here, and those include the Merchant Center account ID of the linked Merchant Center account, as well as a feed label. Now, the Merchant Center account ID, that's pretty self-explanatory. The feed label can be one of two things. This can represent either a product feed in that Merchant Center account, in which case we'll target just the products in that feed. Alternatively, we can enter a two-letter country code, and if we do that, then we'll target all products from that country. And as you can see here on the left, we also have some optional fields that you can enter, such as campaign priority and enable local products. And as you can see here, as you enter those, they'll just show up in the code. This was pretty easy to make this a PMAX retail campaign. I think the more complex part of this is actually setting up your Merchant Center account, your products in your Merchant Center account, but that's a little bit outside of the scope of what we'll be discussing today. I wanted to point out that with just a couple of settings, we can upgrade this to a PMAX retail campaign. And once we've done that, Google's automation technologies can now create ads dynamically and serve them on different channels based on the information in our Merchant Center account and specifically the products that we target. So it's taking a lot of the work out of our hands and just automating this entire process to serve ads with the right products to the right people at the right time. It's pretty cool. So the last thing I want to point out is something that I've touched on a couple of times in previous episodes, which is that when using PMAX retail campaigns, the minimum asset requirements for PMAX campaigns don't apply here. So you don't have to add assets to asset groups, which we'll cover in future episodes, when creating a PMAX retail campaign. However, as I've said multiple times before, 
If you have those assets, we do encourage you to use them because they unlock additional advertising channels and enable the automation technologies to create different formats of ads that can help create more conversions. I do want to show you how to disable these features in the interactive guide in case you're curious. As far as assets go, we've already covered this, but I'll just show you very quickly. Head on over to the assets section, skip asset creation, true. And that'll skip the actual creation of assets altogether. On the other hand, and we'll cover this in a couple of episodes, there's this asset group asset operation section, and we can skip this by setting this setting to true. And when we do that, we won't attach any assets to the asset groups as we create them. I hope that was helpful in understanding what a PMAX retail campaign is, what some of the benefits of using a retail campaign are, and how to set up your integration. As I mentioned earlier, there is one other requirement, which is to set up one or more product partition trees using listing group filters. We'll get to that in episode six, but in the next episode, we'll talk about asset groups. I'll see you then.